Hello and welcome back to another end up other video. Today we are talking about potential tropical cyclone 2, which is likely to form into tropical storm or hurricane Bonnie. Starting off here with the National Hurricane Center page, let's talk about the current statistics of this storm. Currently, we have maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, minimum central pressure of 1,009 millibars. It is located at 10.4 degrees north and 61 degrees west, and is moving west at 22 knots, which is 25 miles per hour. It is just to the west-northwest of Trinidad and Tobago. Formation chance through 48 hours is high at 70%, and through 5 days, the chance is high at 90%. So it is very likely here that we see our second name storm of the year. So, uh, PTC2 is expected to remain a potential tropical cyclone most of the day on Tuesday and into Wednesday. And as this storm moves into late Wednesday, we are expecting it to become a tropical storm. Now, during this time period, it will be passing just to the north of Caracas, Venezuela, and just past Maracaibo, uh, right in here. So, a couple of major cities in the track of this storm system. Now, eventually, this will move into the Southern Caribbean Sea fully. Now, right now, it's just right on the edge here of South America. But it will get a little bit further over water, and we could see some strengthening in that time. This is between... 8 p.m. Thursday and 8 p.m. Friday, so a good 24 hours over some solid water, and we could see this intensify into a hurricane before it makes landfall here in southern Nicaragua, right around uh, Bluefields, Nicaragua, and this could even cross over, passing right by Managua, before it enters into the Pacific and starts to make a turn toward the north where we could see some impacts uh, in San Salvador and maybe even Guatemala City as it starts to ride up the western coastline of Central America. Let's take a look here at our arrival time of winds with wind speed probabilities turned on. You can see that right now 100% chance of tropical storm force winds just to the east of the center of the storm. So Trinidad and Tobago right now under the tropical storm force winds. Port of Spain right in there. So is San Fernando. And we could be seeing that start to move out throughout the day on Wednesday. Now the winds do die down. The probability is tropical storm force winds died down passing by Caracas and uh, by Maracaibo. But once it enters this little area uh, in the southwestern part of the Caribbean Sea, it does gain that strength before it enters into Nicaragua near Bluefields and Managua. So, there is a few key messages for this storm. Heavy rainfall is expected to spread westward across the Windward Islands and parts of northern Venezuela tonight through late Wednesday night. Localized flash flooding will be possible. Winds to tropical storm force are expected over portions of the southern Win Windward Islands for a few more hours over Islas Margarita Wednesday morning and over the ABC Islands that is Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao by Wednesday evening. Tropical storm conditions are possible along the northeastern coast of Venezuela tonight, including Caracas, and early Wednesday, that is more of Maracaibo. There is a greater than normal uncertainty in the system's forecast intensity once it reaches the southwestern Caribbean Sea late Thursday and Friday, which will depend on how much it interacts with land from tonight through Thursday. 
Of course, once it gets into that area of the southwestern Caribbean Sea, it's going to intensify, and then we will see a potential, a potential hurricane here. If this storm does form, it will be a tropical storm or hurricane Bonnie. Now, here's the current satellite images. We are just waiting for a little bit more thunderstorm convection here by the center. Uh, we got the tropical storm force winds in place. We're just looking for a little bit more organization in the center of the low. But it is becoming more uh, organized toward the center there. And Venezuela and Colombia should be getting some of those thunderstorms near the center there, as well as the ABC Islands right in here and here. So here's the ABC Islands, and then you have uh, Nueva Esperata, Esperata right in here. So we could see some thunderstorms over those areas, potential uh, flash flooding could be a result of that. Here's our global hurricane models as part of our current storm information. And you can see that the track of the storm is pretty well defined at this point. From now until probably Wednesday, we are looking at this storm just tracking right over the northern coast of South America, entering into the Southwest Caribbean Sea, making landfall in southern Nicaragua, becoming a hurricane maybe in that We'll talk about the uh, intensity guidance later. And eventually popping back out into the Pacific, then we start to see things start to, to fray. Does it continue to move west? Does it take that turn to the north? Who knows? The GEFS has this basically going straight, which does limit some of the impacts that San Salvador or Guatemala City could have. The GEFS kind of has that turn to the north. And the let's go here to the European ensemble where it does have that taking the turn to the north, kind of putting San Salvador and Guatemala City in that area of impact. Now, I do want to look at one more thing here, and that is the intensity guidance. You can see here that we could see some exponential uh, intensity growth in this storm. That is the track that most of these spaghetti strains, as I like to call them, are taking at the moment. Right now, we are just on the border of tropical storm, tropical depression. But by the next 72 hours, we could be in uh, maybe even moderate Category 1 status, with one model even keeping that status and staying at Category 2 hurricane. Then we have that drop-off over land, and then you have the question marks here. Does it continue to kind of die off? Does it rebound and become a hurricane yet again? Does it stay as a tropical storm for a while? Does it just diminish all the way down to a tropical depression? That's where the question mark is, right at this uh, 96 hour mark where we could have that re-entrance into the Pacific Ocean is when you're gonna start to have those question marks in place. So we're going to look at two models here. This is the GFS model showing this storm tracking right past Caracas and Maracaibo, making landfall in Bluefields, Nicaragua, impacting impacting the uh, Managua there, and taking that turn toward the north, putting San Salvador and Guatemala City under some of those effects, and eventually starting to die off in the Pacific. Then you have the European model here, which has this storm system really not gaining any strength. Uh, stays as a low tropical storm throughout most of its life cycle. It really doesn't start to intensify here until it gets out into the Pacific, and then you could start to see it get toward hurricane force strength there. Now, the GFS here again, we're going to be looking at our uh, wind speeds here. As this system is making landfall in Nicaragua, it does have those wind speeds down, maybe even at tropical depression strength. Now, the European model definitely has it either at a low-end uh, tropical storm or a tropical depression here. Let's see. Yeah, tropical depression strength, but as it gets into the Pacific here, we could even see... Uh, category 1, Category 2 hurricane on that 
side. But that is all the information that I have for this storm. Definitely an interesting one. We usually don't see uh, tropical cyclones this far to the south. I think the last one we had was in 2017, which was Tropical Storm Don had that track right past Trinidad and Tobago, really far south compared to other systems that we usually have out of our main development region. But that is all the information I have on this storm. What do you think? Comment in the comment section down below. That is all I have. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.